problem is when you're creating myth, everyone has their own vision of that myth. So to sit with a director, with myself as a producer, with Warner Brothers executives, and then the network executives, and come close to everyone's feeling about Wonder Woman was a very difficult task. Whoever we found seemed to have part of the whole equation. They looked good in clothes, or they were a wonderful actress, um, but usually if they looked good in clothes, they couldn't act. Or if they were a wonderful actress, they approached the job like a lady truck driver. And Douglas Kramer had to fight for me uh, because they just thought I was too green and then I didn't have enough experience and they were afraid of casting um, any female in a leading role, let alone one that didn't have any experience. Her casting may have been the best casting in history for television or film at that point. She is truly the best embodiment of that character from the comics made flesh. Uh, there was nothing off about her. She was perfectly that face. The beauty and sensitivity and really this, the quality of her looking like a heroic figure as well as her looking like the all-American girl, all these things are brought to bear in the way she is. I feel lucky that I was discovered by Douglas Kramer for Wonder Woman. It was really the first big thing that I ever did. As far as Hollywood was concerned, I was completely unknown. The universe sort of conspired to let me live my dream. Our Diana is strictly business, but maybe, just maybe, one of these days, you'll get tired of missing all the fun. And when that happens, I'd love to be around. You will be, Major. That's a promise. When it came to casting Linda's co-star, once she was set, there really was one overwhelming choice in Hollywood in those days, and it was Lyle Wagner. There was an essential quality to Lyle of gee whiz, <laughs> and just as Linda had her essential naivete, he had his essential gee whiz that worked. I think that it took a lot of moxie on Lyle Wagner's part to play this role. Tall, great looking, he had played second banana to Carol Burnett. He had been doing that and was fine with it and uh, was able to poke fun at himself. Nothing to worry about, Wonder Woman. We handled this all on our own for a change. And I was so busy, to tell you the truth, playing two roles. I didn't have a lot of time to share with Lyle. If there's a regret that I do have, it's that I didn't know him uh, better than I did. Wonder Woman was that outfit to begin with, and it had to be perfect. I can't tell you how many times we looked at it, looked at fabrics, looked at different cuts, how they looked on Linda, how they moved and operated, but we were there every day getting it right. The Wonder Woman, she was dressed in this red, white, and blue costume. We're so familiar with it now, we almost don't see that that's what it is. It's the American flag, and that she was wrapped in the American flag, literally, to. Um, be a patriotic force during World War II, and this was part of the appeal of the character. The only thing I was a little bit taken aback by, this is pre-Madonna, you have to understand, were the sort of bullet breasts, you know. Uh, <laughs> Wonder Woman did it before Madonna did it, and that sort of threw me a little bit. And when Donfeld redid the costume after the first season, they weren't quite as pronounced. It felt like a second skin. I really didn't feel too self-conscious. Oddly, I mean, now that, you know, you mention it, I should have. But, you know, don't forget this was the um, ban the bra time. This was uh, sexual freedom time. This was bikinis and midriffs. And that was the timing. And I really wasn't thinking about being sexy, either. Here's this woman, a very gorgeous woman, running around half naked, essentially, wearing pretty much a swimming outfit. And somehow, she comes across as not being ultra-sexual. And in fact, she is the symbol to young women, or 
women of any age as not being defiled by that exposure. Essentially, the character was taken as what the character's meant to be, as an object of energy and motion, not as of corrupted sexuality or something that is just, you know, for the boys. It was an image that I never worked for in terms of the character. She never thought she was all that. You'd be surprised at how many women ask me for their husbands uh, or boyfriends, and they're not, they don't feel threatened by me because that's not what I was about. The special effects on Wonder Woman were, uh, um, I think, a real collaboration. Leonard Horn, who was the first director, was going to be establishing the bracelets, the changeover into Wonder Woman, and there were a lot of conversations about that, and um, many of them not with me. And when we got on the set one morning, uh, they were going to lock off a camera and try to see what they could do with that. And I, I said to the director, well, you know, I could spin, you know, I could, you know, I took a lot of dancing, and so I'll just do like a, like a pirouette, you know, with your arms out. To the side. He said, show me, and I, I did it, and he said, that's it. There were hours spent figuring out how to do the spin. When we finally worked out the stop camera action, the lab work that had to be done to make it all uh, seamless, cameras that had to be tied down, the uniform, outfit moving, the clothes going on and off. It was very expensive and very time consuming. And while it worked wonderfully as a slow motion striptease in its way, which was pretty daring in the 70s on television, it was so costly and so time consuming that we weren't able to do it on the weekly basis. Someone came up with the cheaper concept, which may in the long run have been more effective with the flash of light and um, almost this heavenly being created before your eyes. Some of the special effects within the television movie would have been a snap to do today. Then there were endless, endless hours spent and a lot of money spent creating and making real an invisible plane. They had the stupidest music playing over that invisible plane. It was sort of like some jazz thing or something. I don't I, I just never liked that plane. What I did think was cool was the tiara or headband as a boomerang. I sort of turned away and we cut, and then when I turned back, it was off, and I threw it. I could never really get it to come back. You know, I've tried. I said, do they really work? <laughs> and I don't think it was aerodynamically right or something. Um, had too much glitter on it. Or maybe it was that star in the middle. I think the most ingenious little invention that the, that the special effects guys came up with was the bracelets because they really worked. And there were these little explosions that happened in the, on the stars in the front that were connected by a wire that was in my palm. That's why my hands are always like this when I did it. 